Y'all, I really, really, really try not to do police stories. I do because I just get so emotional. But I feel like it's necessary to cover this story. I feel like it's absolutely necessary to cover the story. So let's take a look. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Leonard Allen Cure. By all merits, this could be a wonderful story. He was exonerated and released from prison in 2020 for a 2003 robbery in Broward County, Florida, that he did not commit. Now, if you didn't know, we'll talk a little bit about his previous case, and then I'll tell you why it is that we're not talking about this in 2023 with a happy-go-lucky frame of mind. So the Florida Innocence Project said its investigation found evidence in the form of an ATM receipt showing Cure was miles away from the scene of the crime at the time of the robbery he was convicted of committing. The review unit determined that a complete review of the evidence presented at trial and in discovery, as well as further investigation of that evidence, demonstrates the case against Mr. Cure gives rise to a reasonable doubt as to his culpability and that he is most likely innocent. Court documents show, and you have to know that it is seriously a miscarriage of justice if they start writing words like you're probably innocent in the legal filings. They'll just say not guilty. They'll say no proof of guilt. But they're saying, yo, you probably innocent. You innocent, okay? <laughs> like, now, they said this is the first exoneration initiated by the Conviction Review Unit, said a 2020 tweet from the state attorney's office. Welcome to freedom, Leonard, wrote the Innocence Project after his exoneration. The Georgia Innocence Project said Cure had recently spoken to students in Jonesboro, Georgia, about wrongful convictions. After all he endured, he deserved to live his life in freedom, the group said. And now, as you can see, Cure was granted... $817,000 U.S. in compensation from the state of Florida for his wrongful conviction and imprisonment, as well as education benefits. The Innocent Project of Florida said he received the compensation mere months ago on August 9th, and he was in the process of buying a home with the funds. So why aren't we happy? Why are we talking about this? Like, yay, something wonderful happened? Okay, well, let's find out. You know why? Because no matter how much you're vindicated, apparently, when you're a black man in public, that is enough to take your life from you. Real talk. Let's watch this. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Get out! Put your hands back here. I ain't Put your damn hands back here. Who are you? If you can't see that right here, if you're just listening through Spotify or one of our other um, platforms that we currently release podcasting on, basically it says a Camden County Sheriff's Office released body and dashboard camera footage of a traffic stop that led to a man's death. And yes, obviously we're talking about Leonard Allen Cure. Now, you heard the cop approaching him screaming at him right Gah! if you're watching you saw he got out of the car very calmly and right now he's chilling very calmly now he's asking who are you like what do you want but other than that chilling all right Staff Sergeant Officer Sheriff's Office. My name is Yahweh. I don't care. Step to the rear of this vehicle. In the name of who? Now, in the name to of be fair, the man just said his name was John Williams. I would probably also say my name was anything but the guy who just saw, sued the cops and won for nearly a nearly million dollars. I probably also would not admit that, especially if I just got vindicated um, after spending 16 years in prison and I had seen any news media or spoken to anybody in prison about what it's like to be black in public still right so yeah kind of understand why he lied but all right my name is john williams yeah I, I feel you sir i listen i feel you the law of state of georgia step back here now you're getting tased <laughs> Step back here now, you're Watch getting me 
Put your hands on the back of that truck. Do you see that? Put your hands on the back of that truck. The back of the truck. Both hands. Put your hands behind your back. This is, it skipped some stuff, okay? So basically, okay, I don't know what he's going to do on the ground. Like, Both hands, down. your hands behind your back. What are you doing? He's just, he knows what's coming. This man already threatened him to tase him, so he's already trying to tase him. Twice, okay? He's trying to tase him. Twice, okay? So when the tase was stopping the guy, he was sitting there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. The fact that you're out of shape and can't handle an old man who's just like, bro, that's a great reason to shoot someone. Okay. Great reason. Now the thing is, right. And, and I understand this. And, and I was thinking originally um, when I first heard the news that maybe he was in the same state, but he's not, right? He now lives in Georgia, uh, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And he was doing well and aspired to attend college for music production and start a career in the music business. But as we know, his life was tragically cut short for a traffic stop again on his way back to his residence. Imagine being the Florida Innocence Project having to post that. On Monday, a sheriff's deputy in Camden County, Georgia, pulled Kira over at around 7.30 a.m. on Interstate 95. Kira got out of his car at the deputy's request and complied with the officer's commands until learning that he was under arrest, the Georgia Bureau investigation wrote in a press release. Again, why is he under arrest? Did you hear the officer state anything about what he did wrong? He was screaming at this man, telling him to get out, telling him he's going to get tased and whatever, and, and then telling him he's under arrest for what? And trust me, when you've been under arrest for and in prison for 16 years for a crime you didn't commit, that might as well be a threat against your life. Come on now. Now, they said when Kira stopped cooperating, the deputy used his taser on Kira. We saw that. We saw how long he was pressing that taser. And it's not our fault that police don't know how to use tasers effectively when there's a whole bunch of bare skin. But apparently it is our fault. So when they can't use the taser correctly, they'll just shoot you. Uh, Kira assaulted the deputy. They, I don't know if I would call that windmilling assaulting, I, I guess, sort of. Uh, the deputy used a taser for a second time and a police baton. Now, notice they cut that out of that little clip. We're going to have to find a longer clip to see if that's true. I don't know. Um, but they said it. However, Kira still did not comply. I just have this very long feeling that that's not what's going to come out in the footage. I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. That's when the deputies pulled out his gun and shot Kira. Emergency medical responders attempted to treat Kira, but he later succumbed to his injuries. The agency, shockingly, didn't say what prompted the deputy to pull over his Kira's vehicle and then make Kira comply, which he did, very reasonably, and yet despite that, all you did was threaten him and then tell him you were going to arrest him. For what? What did he do wrong? He was just on his way home. The executive director of the Innocence Project of Florida, Seth Miller, said he was devastated by the news of Kira's death. He heard of the shooting from Kira's family and could only imagine what it's like to know your son is innocent and watch him be sentenced to life in prison, to be exonerated, and then be told once he's been freed, he's been shot dead by the police who originally falsely imprisoned him. Amazing. Miller says he's represented dozens of people wrongfully convicted of crimes. While he can't comment specifically on the circumstances of Kira's death, he said that exonerated people always struggle with the concern, the fear that they'll be convicted and incarcerated again for something they didn't do, especially when we have a whole lot of evidence that they literally do this all the time. Literally do this. There's a guy, and he's alive to tell the tale, who's in prison under similar circumstances. He was exonerated. He was released. He sued. He won. They re-imprisoned him. Yeah. 
docuseries on Netflix. The Camden County Sheriff's Office, whose deputy shot and killed Kira, says it will release dash camera and body camera footage of the shooting Wednesday afternoon. The video will show the traffic offenses of speeding over 100 miles per hour and reckless driving, which occurred prior to the body camera video of the deputy's encounter with Leonard Cure. The statement reads, It's past Wednesday afternoon. I don't know. If y'all have seen that, please let me know. Send me the link. I'll do a quick follow-up because I didn't see it. Look at that. April 2023, the day's compensation bill was passed. August 9th, the day he was compensated. He didn't even make it to November 9th, three months later. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. Do you think that it's going to, we're going to find evidence that, uh, Mr. Cure was speeding at over a hundred and he did something so obviously incorrect. He should have been pulled over. You think we're going to find out that the re real crime was driving while black and that when they were going to try to throw him in prison, they were going to throw him in prison for resisting, even though there was no like original crime that he was pulled over or arrested for when what do y'all think um i just i my heart goes out to his family to his mother to any possible children he has family like i just i can't even imagine i don't know let me know what y'all think you, you, you about to lose your